Greetings everyone, Father Hogan here, good to be with you. What I'd like to do for today's meditation is not so much focus on one specific passage, but I'd like to focus on some themes of Holy Triduum. You know, that is the holiest, one of the holiest times in the entire church year. And when our Lenten journey began, we started on Ash Wednesday, in which the priest or deacon or minister said, And remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We've taken this theme throughout our entire period of Lent, and carried us to Palm Sunday, in which you read the Passion narrative of Jesus entering in to Jerusalem. But even now, as we're entering into these final moments of Jesus' life, again to celebrate his life, death, and resurrection. And so for the Archdiocese of St. Louis, one of the great things we're able to do when we are able to gather publicly is in the morning on Thursday, we gather for the Sacred Chrism Mass, for the, the Chrism Mass, in which uh, priests renew their priestly promises that they'd be obedient to the Archbishop as a way of faithful service, not only to him, to the people, but to God and to one another's brother priests. You know, we take these very seriously. In a similar way, like married couples, when they renew their wedding vows, when we made these priestly promises at our ordination, we're asking God to reinstill our faithfulness in Him and help us to continue again to pour out the grace and blessing that it takes to be a priest of Jesus Christ. And now more than ever that we can share His good news with the rest of the world. What also takes place at the Chrism Mass is the excuse me, the blessing of the new oils for the church year. You know, the church is blessed to have three types of oils. The oil of chrism, which typically can be used for <clears throat> excuse me, baptisms and um, ordinations. And we also have the oil of the sick, which if you know of somebody who is ill or is near, the de near death, that the oil of the sick can be used to help them as part of their final journey home. And also the oil of catechumen, which people who are being confirmed and taking on a new step in the church can be <clears throat> blessed with this oil. And for the ancient Greeks, that they believed that this oil would help them in the Olympic Games to do well in battle. And so hopefully as Christians, we take a similar approach as people of goodwill of faith, that we put this oil on that will help us in the spiritual battlefield in which all of us are engaged in. Again, the Chrism Mass is a great way in which we as brother priests can gather to pray with one another, to celebrate one another, and enter in to this Holy Triduum together. And so the Holy Triduum technically begins Thursday evening with Mass of the Lord's Supper. Again, a couple of very important spiritual themes and events take place. The one is the institution of the Holy Eucharist, in which Jesus says, Take this, all of you, and eat, for this is my body and this is my blood and do this in remembrance of me. You know, Mass is not simply just a remembrance to try to place ourselves where Jesus was 2,000 years ago. Rather, it's a daily living enactment of Christ's daily sacrifice for us, in which he gives himself fully in the Eucharist. We're not killing God over and over, but it's the one and perfect sacrifice that we can come to again and again and again, just like the wellspring of all life. It's also on Holy Thursday, the time in which the priesthood was instituted. And what a great time it is to be a priest. Although it is challenging, no doubt about it, what a great time to be a priest, to participate in the servant leadership that Christ showed his apostles. That once he washed the feet of the apostles, that he knows that that's the dirtiest part. And so for all the apostles, including Peter, that if their feet are washed, it's kind of like them being cleansed as well. That they now can enter into new life, taking on a new name, especially for, for <clears throat> many of the apostles, and to bring on this ministry of Jesus Christ to those in need. We then transition to Good Friday, in which we see our Lord take up his cross. You know, he was condemned in the Sanhedrin by the chief priests and Pharisees, spat upon, uh, Peter denied him three times. If anything could go wrong that day, it certainly did. Yet Jesus Christ took it with all grace and truly love for his people. Again, no greater love than for one to lay down his life for his own friends. We see how Jesus picks up his cross with all the bruises and him being scourged and whipped, taking it to his final destination, which is Golgotha, or the place of the skull. And as he was mounted to the cross with all those passerbyers that most of his immediate uh, excuse me, friends had left, 
that almost it felt like he himself had been deserted as well. For he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the most powerful words that are ever echoed by Jesus Christ, some of the most important are near the very end, which he finally says, It is finished. His entire messianic mission, that is, to die on the cross for us, to save us from unending death. What a great grace that we have to participate in that. As we participate in the veneration of the cross, then comes Holy Saturday, Saturday, in which, after Jesus Christ had been taken down from the cross and placed in the tomb, we experience now the stillness of the earth, as the demons are trembling, because they know that the Prince of Peace has defeated sin and death, and now we're waiting for his glorious resurrection. It's a great time to meditate upon the stillness of the earth. Then comes Saturday evening, when all of his preparation, all of his three years of public ministry, all of his time on earth come to its greatest final fulfillment. That is when Jesus Christ rises from the dead. And what a glorious opportunity that we have to participate in not only uh, Christ's life and death, but in his resurrection. You know, for many of us, we are not a Good Friday people and that our suffering is not simply limited to despair and frustration and all the heartache that we experience. Rather, our two, our lives are meant to be resurrected, that our clothes and everything become dazzling white. And it's part of the spiritual purification that God wants to help us to go through. For gold is refined through the fires as well. And obviously we are more precious than gold itself. And so after Jesus Christ has been resurrected from the dead, he then appears to many of his disciples showing his wounds now, although Satan had his day, but God has forever. And so his accomplishment over sin and death continues to show how God lives on as now a resurrected body. And not only that, but then he shares that story with the Emmaus Walk, in which he invites his disciples to recount the wondrous story of Jesus Christ and of all the things that have taken place. For you and for me, Hopefully you and I, we don't really have any expectations coming into this week. We expect God to do the unexpected, to take on our sins and to die on a cross. What a great gift that God has given to us. Truly an interplay between scandal and wonder. Allow your God, allow God to really bring about wonder in your life to show that really anything is possible. And God help us in this time and this reflection that as we profess and <clears throat> really move through this Holy Triduum, that we can really see the awesome power of God. My prayer for you and for myself as well, that we will continually be amazed how God works now during this Holy Season through the COVID-19 crisis and forever. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good and gracious God, we thank you for taking on our sins. We thank you for dying for all of us, for we truly need a Savior. Now more than ever, help us to reflect gifts that you've given to us and may truly try to live out now and forever. We make these prayers in your name, Jesus. Amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's certainly been a joy and privilege to pray with you throughout these last couple weeks and we continue now more than ever. I look forward to seeing you again on Easter Monday, which we can truly say that Christ has risen from the dead. God bless and I'll see you soon.